So I now want to talk about the different sources of DNA that we use to reconstruct human evolutionary history. One source of DNA is that which is present in the nuclear genome that's located in the nucleus of the cell. And there's another type of genome which is present in the mitochondria of the cell. And the mitochondria is the energy-producing organelle. So what is the difference between these different genomes? Well, the uh, nuclear genome consists of 22 autosomal pairs of chromosomes, and then the sex chromosomes, XX for females and XY for males. The nuclear genome is about 3.4 billion bases in size, and it consists of about 20,000 coding genes. It's inherited from both parents, but it also undergoes extensive recombination each generation. But one of the reasons it's useful is that there's so many different locations where we can study variation, given that there are 3 billion nucleotides. It's just a little bit more difficult to trace them back to a single common ancestor. By contrast, the mitochondrial DNA genome is very small. It's only about 16,000 nucleotides in size, and it's circular, and it's passed on only through the maternal lineage. There's also no recombination, and it has a very high mutation rate. All of these features make it very useful for tracing evolutionary history. So let me give you another example of what I'm referring to. The mitochondrial DNA is inherited through the maternal lineage, whereas the nuclear DNA is inherited from both parents. So if we were to trace back from a present-day individual, they will have inherited their nuclear genome from their parents. Their parents would have inherited from their set of parents, and then their set of parents, and so on. So we can trace it back to a large number of ancestors. But by contrast, if we're tracing back mitochondrial DNA lineages, we can see that they're only passed on through the maternal lineage. So they're essentially inherited from a single lineage. We can trace them back to a single common female ancestor. And that's why they've been very useful for human evolutionary genetic studies. So, for example, if we were to consider these um, dots to be mitochondrial DNA lineages, and let's start at generation 11 at the bottom, shown by the red dots, and imagine those are different mitochondrial DNA sequences from different individuals. At some time in the past, these two um, individuals, for example, coalesce back to a common ancestor. And then this group coalesces back to a common ancestor here, and ultimately, they all coalesce back to a single common ancestor. Now, in the popular literature, the single common ancestor for mitochondrial DNA is often referred to as mitochondrial Eve. But one thing to remember is that Eve was not alone. She lived within a population, as we can see here by the other colors. But those lineages just never made it down to the, to the present day. So this is a phylogenetic tree constructed by sequencing mitochondrial DNA whole genome lineages from ethnically diverse individuals. So each individual actually represents a branch on this tree. And if two individuals are very closely related to each other, they'll be very close to each other um, in the tree. So one of the first things you can see using chimpanzee as an outgroup is that all modern human lineages coalesce at about 170,000 years ago. And so that corresponds very well with the time of origin of anatomically modern humans. So another thing that we can see is that all of the oldest genetic lineages are from African individuals. We can also see that the um, very oldest lineages are from the San and the Mabuti Pygmy hunter-gatherers. And then the more recent lineages are from non-African populations. And that is a, a pattern that's very consistent with the model of a recent African origin of modern humans. Now, another way that we can compare mitochondrial DNA sequences is to simply count up the number of sites at which they differ when we compare any pair of sequences. And when we do this, we observe that um, African, any two African lineages will differ from each other at many more sites than any two non-African lineages. And again, that means that there has been more time for variation to accumulate in Africa and is consistent 
with an African origin of modern humans. When we sequence the mitochondrial DNA lineages, we can classify them as haplotypes, and those haplotypes belong to larger subsets of haplogroups. And you can think of a haplotype as simply the arrangement of genetic variants along a chromosome. Or in the case of the mitochondrial DNA, there's just a single genome. So it's really just the different um, nucleotide differences amongst different mitochondrial DNA lineages. And one of the first things that you can note is that there are different haplogroups in different regions of the world. So here are some that seem to be pretty specific to Africa, um, but are also present in some regions where there may have been some gene flow from Africa. Then we have others that may be more common in Europe, um, or in East Asia, or in the Americas. And for that reason, um, mitochondrial DNA can be very useful for tracing recent uh, human migration events. Now, by contrast, the Y chromosome is also um, inherited with no recombination, and so it can also be very useful for tracing back through the male lineages. And here is a phylogeny constructed from Y chromosome variation. And as with the mitochondrial DNA, what we see is that the oldest lineages are specific to Africans. And the more recent lineages are found predominantly in non-Africans, although we do see some in Africans as well. Again, this is consistent with the recent African origin of modern humans. We can also look at Y chromosome haplogroups. And one of the things that's a little bit different is you can see that they're a bit more differentiated between geographic regions. So, for example, here we just see um, haplogroups that are in blue, and we see very distinct haplogroups in the Americas shown in purple. And one of the reasons for that may have to do with um, sex bias migration, that you may have, for example, one male traveling long distances, and it may also have to do with mating patterns of um, mating structure. So, for example, in some populations or ethnic groups, you may have one male who has many different wives. And because of that, the effect of, so the effect of population size of the Y chromosome is actually smaller than the mitochondrial DNA, and we tend to get more genetic differentiation around the world. 